Welcome to the Life After Life podcast, where we explore our soul's physical and non-physical journey. I'm Majana. Let's discuss angels, guides, and loved ones from the other side. Hello and welcome back. Hey, guess who's back today? Ah, you got a visitor. <laughs> <laughs> Long time no here. Uh, yeah, he's been a busy guy, so I'm glad he joined us today. We've got a lot going on, and that's for sure. So it's good to be back. Good to be back with you. Glad to have you. Well, today, let's talk about a really deep topic. Uh-oh. <laughs> but try to keep it oh, fairly light. I'm a Scorpio. Go ahead. <laughs> forgiveness. Ah. What's the purpose of forgiveness in your soul's journey? And does it really matter? Oh, I think it matters for sure. Absolutely. Because, you know, one of the things that I've been learning in this astrology stuff that I'm just captivated by this whole idea of things that are not resolved before will get brought forward. They do that. And you know what's interesting? I've been listening to a lot of webinars and studying different people's take on this, and I think this makes a lot of sense, is the idea of karmic maturity or karmic fruition. So what we bring into this life is not necessarily from a past life. We talked about that on the reincarnation Good. episode. Yeah. Good. So we're on the same page because it's collectively brought forward, but that which is ready to be dealt with in this life, right? It's there to deal with or not, and it ain't going to be easy, <laughs> but that's, that's, what, that's what's hot. Yes. It's ripe for the picking. And you know, I'll bet if you were to be able to somehow magically dissect that and do a double blind scientific research study on it, that forgiveness would be at the root of a lot of stuff that comes forward. I think so. I'll bet you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's something that I kind of struggled with. Um, not so much in my everyday life. I think overall I'm pretty trusting and, and let things slide when they come up. I don't tend to hold grudges. And there was a period of time in my life that actually, okay, it was abuse. It was physical abuse by a family member and that there was a long time without any communication with that person. And then all of a sudden that person and family kind of showed up again. And I was talking to a very close friend of mine who happened, he was actually a minister. And I said, you know, here's the thing. My abuser who had been far worse to his own children was not in a healthy state. I mean, I'm talking about he had gotten very ill and had legs, both legs amputated and had to spend a lot of time in the hospital. And, and you know, I said, the problem is I'm having a real hard time finding empathy for him and compassion because he's not a daily part of my life. And I kind of feel like, you know, what goes around comes around. And I love this response totally love this. So my friend said, you know, it's not about whether or not forgiving is not about him because does he care if you have forgiven him? When you remember, when you go back to those memories and you feel angry and you feel hurt and you feel all that inner wounded child, is he experiencing that or did he ever? No, of course not. So when I relived those memories that had been trudged up, who was I hurting by not forgiving him? Me. Yeah. <laughs> Only me. And that's what my friend said. He said, forgiveness is always only for yourself because that other person is oblivious. And then I said, okay, all right, yeah, I can get my head around that. Whether I like it or not, I can, I can get that. Okay, here's the question that kind of, I was like, oh gosh. He said, so once you can get to that point of forgiveness, take it a step farther. What did you learn from that experience? Or what did that experience do to contribute to the positive person you are today? How did it positively impact you? Mm. I have to admit, I struggled with that. <laughs> <laughs> and he wasn't going to let me get out of the room without coming up with at least one way. Talk about being pinned against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> so that was huge for me 
absolutely huge. And I would love for you to really spend some time thinking about that because I can't pin you up against the wall. What that did is it made you get to a point where you had let it go so that you could say that there was something that came good of it. Yes. And There's it was a release it had to be fast. there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was a fast, you know, we're standing in a room talking and, and it was fast. It, it's like, let me go think about this. No, 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 right now. So, yes, it it was a point of release. I can't say that I ever came to a point of gratitude. Never got that far. But I did release it. And if you listened to the Karma <laughs> and re, the Karma and Reincarnation podcasts, you know, th- those lessons are in there, too. You know, this is part of the great tapestry that I don't think we'll understand here for sure. But that is our, you know, in a soul environment, in an infinite soul environment, do we agree to come as the bad guy? Mm-hmm. Right. In fact, you know what? Somebody just emailed, and thank you for that, but brought up that very question, is why do people come into this earth as, quote, bad people? or mean people, and is that free will? Well, you have a soul pod and soul contracts, right? If someone doesn't come in to play the role of the bad guy in your life, then how do you learn forgiveness? You know, we could use my mom's story as an example of this because Majana has had communication with my mom. I have. And her sister about, you know, my mom, my relationship with my mother was really difficult. And she played the bad guy role. And um, I wasn't as advanced in all of this when she passed, but I was at least advanced enough that I had a little conversation, knowing that her soul was probably listening. And that was my release. That was kind of my forgiveness and, and just, you know, expressing, you hurt me. And yet I know it was all part of a purpose. And the cool thing is now that she's, not in body, when she came back, she talked about that. And that was such a gift, right? It was very cool for me to experience that and then get to share that with Thomas. But that's exactly what she addressed was, I'm sorry about this, and I did this for you. There were lessons to help you grow through this. It's, you know, it's, it's almost hard for our little finite minds, especially in this culture that we live in, which is so sanitary and everything is so pure and we're not supposed to, you know, have any problems that we think that that's, that's there, that that's by design. Well, here's the other piece of it, It, especially in our culture, victimhood is great. Every, you can be a victim and you get all the support uh, you know, empathy, compassion, sometimes even financial support because you're a victim. Well, that's true. That's true. And when you're looking at this as a soul's journey and you actually agreed to come into this lifetime and experience that, well, you have to get rid of the victimhood. Yeah. <laughs> you get an opportunity to grow through it. And if you choose not to take that opportunity now... <laughs> Round two, you get to try it again. You will bring it and it'll be hot again. Right. You get multiple opportunities in one lifetime to deal with something. If you think about that, some issue that just keeps showing up for you, it might be handling money. It might be choosing the wrong partner. It might be the same event keeps happening to you at work. No matter who your boss is or what job you have, you always have the same problem with either coworkers or a supervisor, whatever. Those opportunities to grow through it will keep showing up. And each time it becomes a little bit hotter, a little bit harder to deal with and a little more in your face. Universe made it very clear that I am right there with some stuff in my life right now. <laughs> and the thing is, here's the key to stop Look at it to notice that, right? Self-awareness. Notice it and go, instead of going to victimhood, why me? Why does this always happen to me? It's not fair. Blah, blah, blah. Stop. And own it. First identify it. What is happening? Again. Exactly. And then go back to the patterns. 
Why is that a pattern? And then now we're going to get into some subconscious stuff to go back and really identify when that first happened to you. It is work. This growing stuff is often hard work. And forgiveness is a piece of that. So when people come into your life and are mean or bad to you, what they're doing is giving you opportunities to grow beyond where you were yesterday, to grow to a new plane of development in this lifetime than you were last lifetime. So again, it's all about the soul's journey. We talked about this book a long time ago, Little Soul in the Sun by Neil Donald Walsh. Love it. Oh, that is truly one of my favorite books. And it looks like a children's book. And it is on the surface. Great pictures. I love the illustrations in there. But the meaning and the messages are so deep. And he just did a beautiful job with it. In fact, what he says in there as this little soul is coming down to the earth and chooses, speaking of forgiveness, that's what the little soul wants to experience and realizes somebody has to be awful. And another little soul says, oh, I'll do that for you. I'll come up and be awful to you because I love you that much. So in those relationships you have in this lifetime of less than desirable experiences, those people that, especially if it's in your soul pod, that are really con conflicting with you, if you can reframe it to that, that really on a soul level, that person is beautiful and such a bright light and was willing to come to this dense energy planet Earth and lower their vibration even more during those times to be so bad that you get to learn to practice forgiveness. That is a pretty deep love. Quite a concept. It is. It really reframes things. Well, that's my two cents. <laughs> that's a pretty good two cents, I'd say. So, yes, forgiveness is important. Definitely. For, yeah, for your soul growth, not for anybody else, but for yours. Well said. Thank you so much for your comments, your emails, your questions, and always for your topics for podcasts. I love and appreciate that. You can get a hold of us at Majana at lifeafterliferadio.com. And until next time, namaste.